We are going to talk about partial agnes in this video. In the Clark's model, d plus r equals dr, and the dr will generate response. But in many cases, not all the dr will generate response. The dr can shift to an active form, dr star, which will generate a response. And the intrinsic activity is a star. So we have another constant here. We call it d2, and this is d1. You can probably see now the amount of response is determined by how much dr star there is. The equilibrium between dr and dr star plays the crucial role in the amount of response the system can generate. In other words, kd2 is the key. So kd2 is defined as dr over dr star. The smaller the kd2, the bigger the dr star, and the higher the response will be. If kd2 is extremely large, most of the dr is in the inactive form, and there will be no response. By now, you should be able to derive form of Q by yourself using the equations of state and the definitions of KD1 and KD2. The final form of the equation is A star times RT over KD2 plus 1. So this part is the maximal response you can get. So Q max equals A star RT over kd2 plus 1 and uh, times d over d plus kd1 kd2 over kd2 plus 1 so ec50 is kd1 kd2 over kd2 plus 1 q max can be written as ar star times rt times 1 over kd2 plus 1. We can also rewrite ec50 kd1 times kd2 over kd2 plus 1. So these two terms can be considered the modifiers of the Clark's model. For this term, if kd2 is 0, this term is 1. So when kd2 is 0, the drug is a full agonist. All the dr is in the active form, and the qmax equals a times rt. That is what we have in Clark's model. When kd2 is extremely large, this term will become 0. So qmax will be 0. In other words, the drug is an antagonist. For the EC50, when kd2 approaches 0, this term approaches 0. When KD2 approaches an extremely large number, this term approaches 1. So when KD2 increases, EC50 will increase, and the Qmax will decrease. I borrow this graph from Dr. James Wells' lecture notes. From curve A to curve I, KD2 increase. Here is log EC50 increases, and the Qmax decreases. Things can become more complicated when there are two agonists in the system. One of them is full agonist, and uh, the other one is partial agonist that can generate 40% of the maximal response. Looking at this graph, it reminds me something my friend once told me. My friend said, never argue with a stupid dude, because that dude will drag your conversation to his IQ level and beat you with his experience. I wanted to argue with him, but I stopped because of what he said. The partial agonist is the dude. His level is 40%. So no matter where you are, here, 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 well, it's quite unfortunate of you if you are here. So no matter where you are, he will drag you to 40%. And the process of approaching 40% is a rectangular hyperbola because of this model. Upon seeing this, the first three letters come into your mind is WTF. However, it's in this simple form. In this graph, you have A, B, C, D, E, F, six curves, and they have different initial 
concentration of full agonists. For A, there is no full agonist, so there is no response at uh, the starting point of the system. When you add more partial agonist, the response will be capped at 40%. In the case of B, you have some amount of full agonist in the beginning. So you have an initial response. When you add more partial agonist, the response will increase. So when the concentration of full agonist in the system increases, the initial response will increase as well. The take home message for the partial agonist model is that when KD2 increases, Qmax will decrease and EC50 will increase.